This is Andrews Bald in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, about two miles south of Clingman's Dome. Uh, you can see this is a 3D photo, not a 3D video. I got rained out when we were out here on Grassy Bald and was just able to snap a photo. Um, so the weird gray uh, circle at the bottom, I've whited out my thumb so you don't have to look at that. Um, so with Grassy Balds, they're really a unique ecosystem and they're not really well understood. There's a lot of theories, but there aren't necessarily a lot of well-supported hypotheses uh, on why there are grassy balds here in the Southern Appalachians. So with these grassy balds, you can see some spruce trees, a, a handful of fir trees here. We're at about 5,900 feet elevation on a generally south-facing slope. Um, you can see a lot of shrubs out here. There's flame azalea, rhododendron calendulaceum. There's catawba rhododendron, rhododendron catawbiense. Uh, there are a number of different blueberries out here. And there are all sorts of grasses that you can see on, on the, the herbaceous strata. These grasses are, are often bunch grasses uh, and many other herbaceous plants that are unique in these areas. However, if you walk, you know, a couple miles uphill from here and up another 700 feet in elevation to the highest point here in the park, or even go to Mount Mitchell, the highest point in the Southern Appalachians at a little over 6,800 feet, there are trees right on top of the mountains. So we're not above tree line here, like you might see out in the Rockies or other mountain ranges that are high enough or far enough north. So that's not why you have these grassy open balds. Um, there are a couple main sort of theories. Uh, one of them relies more on natural disturbances. The other relies more on anthropogenic disturbances, and it may actually be a blend of both. No one really knows. So when you look at the history of this area, 18,000 years ago, we were at our peak of our last glaciation. And so glaciers had pushed taigai-like vegetation this far south. And at high elevation 18,000 years ago, we may have been above tree line. So you may have had these vast areas of open grassland, kind of like this. And then, of course, the glaciers receded. The trees moved up the mountains, which is why we have Fraser fir and red spruce up on top of them now. And, you know, you may have had some areas where disturbances coincided to keep some of this open grassland here. There's no real evidence that fire has played any recent part in these. Uh, there's not much in the way of charcoal record or evidence. Uh, and these don't seem to be ecosystems given their high elevation and lots of rainfall where fire would have played much of a role. So fire's probably not the factor. If you look until maybe 10,000 or so years ago, we had some really large uh, mammals uh, in the, the southern Appalachian region. And uh, these megafauna would have included many different sort of ungulates, herbivores that may have browsed and kept these open. Those populations crashed, uh, but then you had species like bison, woodland bison, caribou, elk, uh, deer, all here browsing. So those populations may have kept these open uh, through herbivory. Well, we wiped out the bison, the elk, um, and so you just had white-tailed deer, a few other species here maybe causing enough herbivory. But then we you know, hunted them down to lower population densities, but then you, you look into the 1700s, 1800s, and you start seeing European settlers introducing domestic livestock, cattle, sheep, and the like. And so maybe those grazed and kept these areas open. Uh, but what's happened since, you know, the park was established in the mid-1930s. Uh, they removed those uh, domestic livestock, and about half the grassy balds have been lost since. And so what you see happening is uh, volunteer efforts where they're manually removing the shrubs and the trees, which would encroach through normal successional processes uh, on these ecosystems. So those are now being removed um, to keep a few of these balds still in existence. Uh, but really, probably these were disturbance-mediated systems, probably with herbivory, whether it was domestic animals or uh, native ungulates being the, the main cause to keep these balds open. So these are interesting forest communities. Uh, they're unique in terms of their composition uh, with grasses, uh, herbaceous species, and other flora you really don't find in many other places. And the, the ecological story here, we don't really know, but some interesting hypotheses.